What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from Design Cuts and today we're going to be doing a brand new tutorial where I show you guys how to create a flyer for the Petal Pushers Flower Shop. Now today we're going to be using some assets from the latest bundle, the Creatives Complete Artistic Collection. Now there's a ton of great stuff in here from Vector Hut and a lot of other really cool stuff, Retro Supply, Lisa Glanz, and a bunch of other really talented contributors who have been kind enough to give us some of these free assets that we can use for today's tutorial. So let's jump right into it. The first thing we're going to do is fire up Photoshop and create a new document. Now for the size, we want to go ahead and set the width to 5 inches and the height to 7 inches. And let's go ahead and leave the resolution set to 300, color mode RGB, and we can change the background contents to white. Now before I go ahead and create my new document, I'm just going to go ahead and give my file a name. So let's go ahead and call this Petal Pushers Flower Shop and then go ahead and hit create on the lower right hand corner. Now, once you have your new document here, you should see that you only have this one layer and it's the background layer with a little lock next to it. So let's go ahead and double click on that layer to unlock it. And we'll just call this layer BG and then press enter. And now from here, what we wanna do is lower the opacity to about 50%. So you can manually move this slider or you could just press the number five on the keyboard and that will automatically change it to 50% opacity. So from here, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and jump over to our freebies folder for this tutorial. And what I want to do is navigate to my first asset that we're going to be using here, which is this RSCO bent screen JPEG file. I'm going to open that up in Photoshop and drag it over here into my working composition. All right. So just move that to the side, click and drag it. And the first thing that I want to do here is actually just double click on the layer itself to change the name. Double click in here, and then I'm just going to paste the name of the file itself. All right, and then what we're gonna do is hold the control key and click on the layer, and then choose convert to smart object from the menu. Now, what's great about converting things to smart objects, as you'll probably know if you've seen some of my other videos, is that you can just resize these as much as you need to without having to worry about any loss in quality. If we didn't convert this to a smart object, we would simply be working with a raster-based image that would lose quality the more that we need to change the size. So all I'm doing here is pressing Command T to do a free transform and dragging inwards while holding the Shift key to resize my texture, just so that it fits nicely within the canvas here. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere around here looks pretty good. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is press Command or Control on a PC plus I on the keyboard, and that's going to invert our texture. Another way you could do this is by coming up to the image menu and choosing adjustments, invert, and you'll see that the keyboard shortcut is right here as well. Another nice thing about using smart objects is that it allows you to apply what are called smart filters. So that just means that you can always go back and undo something, turn it off, or change the parameters depending on which adjustment you are applying. So from here, what we want to do is actually change the blending mode of this layer to screen. All right, so we're going to change it from normal to screen. And then what we want to do is duplicate this four times. So press Command and J on the keyboard until you have four copies plus your original layer. Okay, now with your top layer selected here, hold the Shift key and select the very bottom layer. And then press Command G to put these into a group folder. Now once again, I'm just going to give this folder a name. I'm just going to use a file name for the moment. And the next thing I want to do is actually add an adjustment layer. So hold the Alt Option key and click on this little icon down here that looks like a black and white circle. And then let's choose levels from this list. Now when this box comes up here, you wanna make sure to check off Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask and then hit OK. And what that's gonna do is add this little arrow here and it's going to ensure that this adjustment only affects this group folder. So not only are adjustment layers a great way to isolate some of the effects that you're applying or to target them to specific layers, but you can also do this to group folders as well. So for the settings here, all we're gonna do is come over here to the right side and let's just type in the value 224. Okay, so that's just gonna lighten this up a little bit. If I turn that on and off, you can kind of see a little bit of the effect that it's having. Come back down here to the adjustment layer and choose solid color. Now this time for the value, we're gonna enter a hexadecimal value down here of 313131 and then hit okay. Now this time we don't have to worry about applying a clipping mask. But let's go ahead and maybe change the blending mode of this layer to multiply. 
And now what we want to do is add one more adjustment layer down here, another solid color. And this time for the value, let's enter 096154 and then press OK one more time. Now for the blending mode of this layer, let's go ahead and change it to color dodge. Okay, and then what we can do is select this top color fill layer, hold the shift key, come all the way down and select your BG layer. And then once again, either press command G or you can click on this little folder icon down here in the layers palette. Double click on the group one layer name to change the name of it. And let's just go ahead and change it to background. All right, and if you haven't done so already, guys, make sure that you're saving your work as you go. So the last thing you want is for Photoshop to crap out and to lose all your hard work. So let's return back to our freebie folder for a second, and we can begin adding some of our beautiful floral illustrations from Vector Hut. The first one that I'm gonna play around with here is flower3.png, which you guys will find in the freebies folder. And all I wanna do is click and drag this over into my document. And then once again, double click on the layer one name and enter a name of your choice, but I will just be using the file name to keep things clear. The next thing I want to do is once again, hold the control key, click on the layer and convert it to a smart object. And then I'm going to press command I, or like I said before, you can come up to image adjustments, invert to invert the smart object layer. From here, let's go ahead and change the blend mode from normal to screen and then press command T to initiate a free transform. Now, when I do this, I can't really see the full image. So in order to zoom out a bit, all I have to do is press command zero on the keyboard and that's going to zoom out. So now what I can do is hold shift and the alt option key and drag inwards from any of the four corners to scale this down. And when I'm happy with the size of my image, I can just press enter to apply the changes. Command zero, once again, will kind of fit this into my window. So that's a nice handy little shortcut just for, you know, for you guys to know and, and to be able to mess around with so that you can actually see some of the changes that you're applying. Okay, and all I wanna do here is basically you know, kind of move this over to the left side of the document, just so I can start to create a little bit of a, a border or a frame here along the edge. Okay, and just play around a little bit with the way that you want it cropped. But once you're happy with that, press Command J to make a copy, Command T to do a free transform. And now you can just click and drag a second copy over here somewhere to the right side. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. And if there's any parts that you want to hide, all we have to do is come down here to apply a layer mask, press the letter B on the keyboard to get your brush tool, and make sure that you're using a solid black foreground color, and then just begin painting out over this flower to hide it. Now, if you don't have your default colors here, all you have to do is either click on these little swatches or press the letter D on the keyboard, and then use the letter X to toggle back and forth between the black and white. All right, but once again, just play around with the positioning and the way that this is cropped. Now we'll come back to our freebie folder and this time let's go ahead and open flower9.png. I'm going to do the same thing where I just click and drag this over into my document. Just double click to rename the layer and this one will be called flower9.png. And then hold control, click on the layer and make it a smart object. Change the blend mode to screen and then command I to invert it. Command T to do a free transform. Command zero to zoom out. And then hold alt option and shift to once again scale this down. Now this time what we want to do is place this on the other areas on the outside of our image on the left and right. So I'm just going to move this over here for a second, maybe rotate it a bit just to see what that looks like, and then press enter to apply the changes. And I'm just trying to kind of once again build up a little bit of a border on the sides here. And once you're happy with that, press Command J to duplicate it, Command T to do a free transform, and then let's move it down here to the lower right hand portion of our image. Okay, and I'm just going to place it somewhere about there. So we now have four kind of copies of our floral illustrations, and we can now add one in the center. So I'm going to come back over, grab flower 10, and open it up in Photoshop. Click and drag this into the document. Double click to rename it. And let's just go ahead and call this one flower 10, as you might have guessed. Go ahead and convert this layer to a smart object. Press command I to invert it and change the blending mode to screen. And then once again, press Command T and Command Zero to do a free transform and zoom out so that you can fit it into your window or your workspace area. All right, and this time what I wanna do is place this one right in the middle here. So let's just see if we can get a nice kind of proper, proper looking background here. 
All right, I think something like this looks pretty cool. And these are just some, some of the beautiful kind of illustrated florals that you guys will get in the full bundle. I mean, these are just three of, of many of these type of illustrations that come with this um, art, complete artistic collection. Right, so I'm just playing around with the positioning here of some of these flowers, maybe moving some in, moving some down, just to try and fill out some of these spaces here. All right, and that's looking pretty good. I just, the one thing that I'm watching out for here is that I want to avoid having any, you know, kind of large gaps. All right, but feel free to play around with this as much or as little as you guys like. But once you are happy with the size and positioning of all of these background elements, all I'm going to do is select the very top one, flower 10, hold the shift key and select my bottom one, flower three, and then press command G to put them into a group folder. Double click on the group one name and just change the name of this folder to floral illustrations. Now from here, I'll hold the alt option key and come back down here to the adjustment layer icon. And this time let's go ahead and choose a hue saturation adjustment. And again, be sure to check off this box that says use previous layer to create clipping mask and then hit okay. Now for the settings here, we first want to check off this colorize box. And that's basically going to apply an overall tone uh, to this entire kind of group folder here, the floral illustrations folder. All right, but once you've checked off that box, the settings here that you want to use is about 164 for the hue. Let's change the saturation to 55. And let's go ahead and change the lightness to negative 56. And you should end up with something like that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is come back to our freebie folder. And this time, the file that we're looking for is the retro effects paper 15.jpg file. All right, once you have that open here, just go ahead and click and drag that into your document. Double click on the layer one name over here in your palette and just enter a name. Again, I'll just be using the file itself. And all I'm going to do from here is hold down the control key, convert it to a smart object. And then I'm thinking that I will probably want to change the blending mode of this so that I can see what's going on underneath. So I'll change it from normal and we're going to make it difference. We're going to make a difference here. And it does make a pretty big difference. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add another adjustment layer with the clipping mask. So hold the Alt Option key and then click on Hue Saturation Adjustment. Check off this box and then hit OK. And this time we're not going to check off the colorized box. We're just going to play around with these settings as is. So I'm going to make the hue set to about 137, the saturation to negative 7, and then I will go ahead and change the lightness to negative 36. Okay, and that kind of creates this cool kind of negative effect on our floral illustration in the background. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is hold the shift key, click on both of these layers so they're both selected at the same time, press command G to put them into a group folder, and then I'll just rename this Retro Effects Paper 15 and save my work before continuing. All right, so let's move on now and we'll go back to our freebie folder. And this time what I want to do is open my swarm4.png file. Now this is just one of the cool assets that comes with the fireflies and jars in the full bundle, but it's a great way to add some cool light effects to your compositions as well. So I'm just going to click and drag that over here, double click on the layer one text and just change it to swarm4. And then what I want to do is hold the control key, you guessed it, make it a smart object, press command T to do a free transform. And now I'm going to hold the shift key and kind of move my cursor over here to the left. And hopefully you guys can see that this you know, you should have kind of a curved arrow or a curved line with an arrow on both sides. So now if I hold the shift key and I move this, I'm actually rotating it by increments of about 15 degrees. And the goal here is to just rotate it until it's upright so that it spans vertically instead of horizontally across the canvas. And once you do that, before you press the enter key to apply the changes, move your cursor back over any of the four corners of the mounting box, hold shift and the alt option key, and then scale it down proportionally from the center. And we're just looking for a nice interesting crop here for our lights. And I think something like this looks pretty good. All right, and once you're happy with the size and positioning of your fireflies, go ahead and press enter on the keyboard to apply those changes. Now, the next thing we we'll wanna do is change the blending mode here from normal to screen, and then hold the alt option key and come back down here to the adjustment layer menu and choose levels, check off the option to use the 
previous layer as a clipping mask and then click OK. Now for the settings here, I'm going to move the left slider in until it's set to about maybe 42 or 43. And then I'll move the right slider in until it's set to about negative, or no, let's say 217. That looks pretty good. And that's just going to get a little bit more contrast out of this and make the fireflies a little bit more vibrant and bright. Okay, so now once again, select the swarm4.png smart object layer. Come down here to the adjustment layer icon. And this time we're going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Okay, but you'll notice that because I first selected the smart object and I already had a clipping mask applied to my levels adjustment layer, that when I added a second adjustment layer in between these two, it automatically has a clipping mask applied to it. So this time, let's go ahead and just move this up one layer or one spot in the layer panel so that it's above our levels adjustment layer and it should still have that clipping mask applied. You can also use the keyboard shortcut command and the left bracket to move it down one position or command and the right bracket on the keyboard to move it up one spot in your layers palette. Now again, for this one, let's go ahead and check off the colorize box. And for the settings, I'm going to enter a hue value of about 139, a saturation value of 72, and let's go ahead and change the lightness to about negative 50. And you should now have something like that. So from here, I'm going to select my hue saturation adjustment layer, hold shift, select the swarm four smart object layer and press command G to put it into a group folder. And I'm just going to call it swarm four. The next thing we're going to add to our file here is our centerpiece, our bouquet. All right, so I'm going to come back to my freebies folder and open up the tulips to bouquet number two dot PSB file in Photoshop. Now we're not concerned with the background layer here at all, which it's locked anyway. But what I do want is to grab this entire group folder and bring it over into my file. So I'm just going to move this tab to the side, click and drag this entire group folder over into my document and make sure that it's at the top of my layers palette. And then I can just come in here and close a few of these other windows, which I'm doing by pressing command and the tilde key and then command and W to close out of each of the tabs. Now back here in my main document, what I want to do is scale this up and rotate it. So I'll first press Command T to do a free transform, and then hold Alt, Option, and Shift to scale it up from the center proportionally. And then I'm just going to rotate this a bit to play around with the positioning. Okay, and maybe, you know, playing around with the, the size here a bit as well. Okay, and if you need to, you can always zoom out by pressing Command and the minus key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to maybe move this up a little bit more just so it's about in the center or a little bit above the center line of our document. All right, but hopefully you guys will end up with something like this. Now what we wanna do is click this little arrow on the Tulips bouquet to expand the folder and reveal the contents. And you'll see that there's a color fill there here, which is actually controlling the color of the bulbs of the flowers themselves. So let's go ahead and just click on that because we wanna change that color. So for the hex value here, let's enter a value of FF0600 which is this nice vibrant red color, and then go ahead and hit OK. And now we're gonna select this shadows folder, come inside here, and you'll see that you have four shadow layers. So I actually wanna create one more copy. So I'm gonna select the top one, press Command J on the keyboard, and then press the number five, just to tone the opacity down to about 50%. Right, and once you've done that, you can close this folder here, or just collapse it rather. And then with the folder selected, what we want to do is come down here back to the adjustment layer icon, hold the Alt Option key and click on it. And then we're going to add a hue saturation layer with a clipping mask applied. Okay, and this time all we're going to do is move the saturation layer all the way to the left to desaturate it. And it should make your bouquet just black and white without affecting any of the other layers below. But from here, what we want to do is change the blending mode from normal to soft light. Now by doing this, it creates a nice, really high contrast effect but it's a little bit too intense. So all I wanna do is once again, press the number five on the keyboard to lower the opacity to 50%. All right, and that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and create a new layer, press T on the keyboard to get our text tool. And I wanna make sure that I have a solid white foreground color. So as I mentioned before, if you see your color palette over here on the toolbar, all I have to do, it looks like I have blue as my foreground color. So I'm just gonna press X on the keyboard to toggle between my foreground and background colors. And then let's just go ahead and click up here and we'll type out the word 
petal, P-E-T-A-L. Now, if you don't have your character panel here, you can access it just by coming up to the window menu and choosing character. But for the font, I'm actually using a font called Avenir. And you can see this in two places. You can see it in the character panel or up here on the top toolbar. So either one of those is fine, but you get a few more options here with the character panel, which you can actually kind of float around like this. All right, but let's go ahead and just click inside here to highlight our text. And I wanna change the style to black and maybe make the tracking quite a bit lower. And then I'm just going to click in here to change the size of my text to 115.93. So you want nice big text. All right, and then all I'm gonna do is press Command T to kind of do a free transform and move this around a little bit. And I'm just playing around with the positioning of my letters here. And you guys will see why in just a second. Okay, so once you've placed this here, go ahead and press Command J on the keyboard to create a copy, and then Command in the left bracket to move this layer below my original petal text layer. Press Command T to do a free transform, and then hold the Shift key and drag this layer down so that it remains aligned. Press Return, click inside here, and just change this word to pushers. Now I'm just gonna click on the Move tool to deselect that, and then press Command T once again to do a free transform. Hold the Alt, Option, and Shift keys and drag inwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box. Now what we're looking for here is to try and align the, you know, our, our text here so that it's the same width as the text layer above. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. Then I'm just gonna slide this down a bit to modify the positioning of the text. Okay, but I wanna end up maybe somewhere around here. All right, and then I'll just go ahead and press Enter on the keyboard. And we're gonna duplicate this layer one more time to add a third line of text. So press Command J and then Command in the left bracket. Press Command T and then hold the Shift key and drag this layer down. Press Return to apply the changes. T to get your type tool. And then click twice inside of the text box to highlight the text. Now this time let's type out the words flower shop. Press Command A to select all inside of here. And let's go ahead back to our character panel and change the style from black to Roman. We'll change the size back to a much smaller point size, say 19.85. And then let's go ahead and change the tracking right here back to where we had it at about 940. So that's, the tracking is actually going to determine how much space is between these letters. Now what we're looking for here is to once again make sure that the width is about the same as the text layer above, which it looks like it is. Now what I'm going to do is hold the shift key and kind of tap this up and down with my up and down arrows so that I can try to space these lines apart pretty much evenly. Now, what we want to do once we have our text set up here is hold the shift key, select your either your top or your bottom text layer, and then select all three of these text layers together. From there, press Command G to put it into a group folder and just change the name to TT for title treatment. Now, what we want to do next is add a layer mask to this group folder. So come down here to the bottom of the layers palette and click on this icon here that says Add Layer Mask. Now from here, I'm actually going to press the number five on the keyboard to lower the opacity of the entire TT folder to 50%. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanna be able to actually see the flowers through the text. Now in order to create the effect that we're going for, where it looks like you know some of the petals are overlapping the letters, we need to be able to kind of see the way that our text is positioned. All right, so at the moment, it looks pretty cool. I think we'll actually have some nice opportunities here to create some, some pretty cool overlaps. Okay, and what you're looking for is, you know, just some nice areas where you can either mask out or, you know, choose to hide some parts of the letters to create some depth. All right, but what's nice about this is that you can always come back into the group folder here and you can change the size or the positioning of your text as needed. So you may decide that you wanna move some of these layers up or down or even you know, reduce the tracking or increase the tracking between the letters, depending on how you want it to look. Okay, but once you're happy with it, all we're gonna do is collapse that folder, make sure that we have our layer mask selected here, and then press the letter B on the keyboard to get our brush tool. Now look along here in the top toolbar and you'll notice that we have a hard round brush selected with a full opacity of 100%. You also wanna make sure that you have black set to your foreground color. And then what you're gonna do is select the Tulips Bouquet number two folder, expand the contents while you still have this mask selected in your title treatment group folder. 
From here, what we want to do is hold the command key and click on this layer thumbnail, the layer mask thumbnail, for the color fill adjustment layer. And the reason for that is because, as you can see in the mask here, there's already a selection for us around all of these red areas where we change the color. So we're going to use that to our advantage here as we begin to paint out some of these areas. So all I'm going to do is grab my brush tool and start to paint over these letters where I want them to appear hidden behind the red bulbs of the tulips. All right, so I'll do that a little bit here for the H and the E in pushers. And we can also do that for the U and a little bit of the P. And I'm actually just going to leave the third line as is because I want that to appear in the front of everything. Okay, but this is the basic idea for this technique, is that we need to lower the opacity of the type so that we can see through it, and then we're just going to mask out the parts that we want to hide. So for the other areas of the actual bouquet itself, we may have to come in here and hold the command key to activate a selection around that by just clicking on the layer thumbnail while holding the command or control key. And then once again, just make sure that you still have your layer mask selected on the TT folder, and you should be able to just come in here and paint over any part of the letters that you want to hide while you have this selection active. So I'm going to do that on the letter S, and I just did it a little bit on the letter P as well. Okay, but I wouldn't recommend doing it on every single letter because you kind of want it to appear a little bit more staggered and random. But once you're happy with that, press Command D to deselect all, and now you can collapse this folder. So for the remaining areas that we want to paint out, we're just going to do it manually with our brush. Okay, so you can press the left or right brackets to increase or decrease the size of your brush. And then you can just kind of zoom in here and maybe like paint out an area like the stem, just using a solid black. You can paint over some of these interior leaves inside of the bouquet itself, where I can hide the bottom of the R. And do the same thing with some of these other letters. Now, I don't feel like you guys have to use the brush tool. Of course, there are other ways to make selections, such as using the pen tool. So what I can do here is click with a point, click with my pen tool to make a point, click down here, further down on the stem, and then click and drag just to control the curve here. So I'm just creating a selection with the curve, and I can hold the Alt Option key and move my cursor over this handle so that I can move it around even more, and I can create a more precise and accurate selection. Now what I want to do is continue this path all the way around and come up here and close it. Now once I've closed that path, all I have to do is press Command and Return or the Enter key, and it will activate a selection around my shape. Now I can just come in here with the brush tool and paint out with black without having to worry about going outside the lines. Okay, so again, if you need to, you can use the pen tool or the brush tool, and you can utilize any of these layers that already have selections around them to help you out as you go. So I once again held the command key and kind of clicked on the layer mask thumbnail of the color fill layer inside of the tulips to bouquet group folder to get a selection around these red bulbs. So that way I can kind of paint out some more of the letter S here. Okay, and we're looking pretty good so far, guys. I'm thinking that I may just want to come in here and do a little more work just around some of these letters here before moving on. All right, so I'm once again just kind of painting out parts of the stems just to see how that looks. And you can always come in here and, you know, fix this up or undo it. That's the nice thing about using a layer mask is that, you know, nothing is permanent. You can come in there and I could just use solid white to paint any of this back in. So for this part, I may switch back to my pen tool just by pressing P. Click to make a point and then second point. And I'm just clicking and holding here to control my, my curve. And then I'll move my cursor over this bottom handle here and hold the Alt Option key. And your cursor should change into this kind of carrot, which will allow you to then click and drag this point that determines the direction of your subsequent point. So from here, I've created this line. And I'm just going to come down, complete the selection, and close it, and press Command and Return to activate a selection. And then make my brush a bit larger using the right bracket key and paint the rest of that out. And now when I'm happy with it, I can press Command-D to deselect it. And let's just go in here and maybe hide a little bit of the letter L as well. So once again, I'm just going to use the pen really quickly to make a selection here. And the more you guys use this and kind of practice with the pen tool, the easier it gets. So if you're not you know, super comfortable or familiar with it, 
this is probably a good time for you guys to try it out and practice. Okay, but well, you can see how quick and easy I was able to do that. Now, all you need to do is press Command-0 to zoom out, and you should be able to fit your entire document into the window here. Now, as you will remember, we lowered the opacity to 50%. So I can now click and just crank that back up to 100, and you can now see the full effect. But let me just go zoom in here, and as I mentioned, I can paint in some of these areas that I may not want to hide. So for example, this part of the E that's going behind the stem looks a little weird. So I'm just going to use the white, solid white brush here to paint that back in. So again, I'm using the X key to toggle between black and white, and just using white to bring some of that back. All right, but other than that, I think this looks pretty cool, and it's a really nice effect to create some depth. But how can we push this a little bit further? Well, I'll show you. Let's go ahead and click the arrow here to expand the contents of our title treatment folder, add a new layer at the top here, and I'm just going to call this letter shadows because I'd like to add some shadows to the text. So I'll press B on the keyboard to get my brush tool once again, press the letter D to get my default colors and make sure that black is set to my foreground color. And what I want to do is lower the opacity of my brush. So once I press B and I have my brush tool selected, all I have to do is press the number two, and you'll notice up here that that changed my opacity to 20%. Now there's one other setting that I need to change, and that's the hardness of the brush. So we've been using a hard round brush, which you can see here in the little preview part on the top toolbar. But if I hold the shift key and the left bracket and I tap it a few times, it'll change the softness of my brush and it'll make it a round soft brush. If I held shift in the right bracket, it will increase the hardness of the brush. And you can kind of see that updating in the corner. So once I've done that, all I need to do is hold down the command key and the shift key at the same time. I'm going to click on each of these thumbnails for each of my first two text layers. So I'm clicking on the letter T here in the layer panel while holding down Command and Shift at the same time. And just like before, that's just going to activate a selection around our first two lines of text. Now that I have a selection, I just want to make sure that my letter shadows layer is selected. I have my brush tool, and all I have to do is come in here and begin brushing. And I'm kind of brushing underneath the petals to add some shadows but it creates a pretty nice looking effect that will help add some depth to our flyer design. All right, and the reason I'm using a low opacity brush is because you wanna to try to gradually build up these shadows here. You don't wanna to go too heavy handed and use you know, a full 100% opacity brush when creating shadows because you want them to look kind of soft and build them up. All right, but just like before, you know, if we mess anything up, it's not permanent. We can always come in there with a layer mask and kind of paint out some areas. So here, for example, you know, I'm kind of inadvertently painting on the right side of the A, so I'm gonna to have to come back and fix that after. But for now, I'm just concentrating on the areas where I want the petals to look like they're coming in front of the letters, and just creating these shadows to add a bit of depth. All right, so a little bit here on the S, and I'm just gonna reduce the size of my brush by using the left bracket, or increase it using the right bracket as I go. All right, so painting here along the stem of the E in the corners here of the E and the H. All right, and usually it looks a little bit better if you start with a large brush and then make it smaller each time you make a pass. All right, that's, that's how I like to do it at least. All right, but you can see how it's helping. It's really helping to kind of push the text back in space a little bit. All right, and really making some of these letters pop. All right, so I'm just gonna do that a little bit more on the U and the P here. And then once I'm happy with it, I can press Command D to deselect everything. Now I'm just gonna add a layer mask real quick at the bottom of the layers palette here. Press B, then press zero to bring it back up to 100% opacity. And I'll press Shift and the right bracket to increase the hardness of my brush. Press the letter X to make sure that I have a black foreground color selected. And I can just paint over the letter A here where I kind of painted in some shadows that I didn't want. Now, just check over really quick to see if there's any other areas that you may want to hide or tone down. And you don't necessarily have to use a hard brush for this. You can also go back to using a soft, low opacity brush to mask out some of the areas where your shadows may still look a little bit heavy. So hopefully that makes sense, but you guys can kind of see what's happening as I go and as I do this. It's just a way to kind of tone back some of the shadows that may look a little bit too intense. But overall, it creates this really nice looking effect and this illusion of depth 
which has been a pretty popular style in typography for a while now. All right, but you should end up with something like this. And we just want to keep the flower shop text plain in, in the front while our other two lines of text have this really nice looking overlap effect. So one last touch I want to do here is to apply an overall texture to the entire design. So I'm going to come back to my freebie folder and I'm going to grab the retro effect paper 16 this time and just pop that open in Photoshop. All right, I'm going to move the tab to the side here and just click and drag this over into my document and make sure that it's placed on the top of my layers palette. And then double click the layer one text and just change the name to the file name. Now hold the control key, convert it to a smart object. And then I'm going to invert it once again. So come up to image adjustments, invert to invert the smart object layer. And then what I want to do is come down here to the adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette and add a levels adjustment layer. So I'm going to hold the alt option key, click on that, and then check off use previous layer to create clipping mask and hit okay. And now for the settings, let's move this left slider in so that it's pretty extreme. I'm going to set this to somewhere around 108. And that's really going to bring out some of these black and, and darker colors here. And I'm going to move the right slider in until it's set to around maybe 210 or 211, somewhere around there. And then I'll once again select my Retro Effects Paper 16 Smart Object layer, return to the adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette, and this time I'm just going to add a black and white adjustment layer. Now it'll automatically have the clipping mask applied because we kind of sandwiched it in between the levels layer and the actual smart object layer itself. So from here, all I have to do, I'm going to select the retro effects paper 16 smart object layer, hold the shift key and select the levels three adjustment layer so that all three of these layers are selected simultaneously. And now I'm going to click on this group folder icon at the bottom of the layers palette. And let's just go ahead and change the name of this folder to retro effects paper 16. So earlier we used 15, now we've got 16, and all we're going to do is change the blending mode from pass through or normal to screen. And that's going to leave us with this really nice kind of texture floating on top of our entire design. So at this point, we're pretty much done, guys. So this is our Petal Pushers Flower Shop design using some of the amazing assets from the latest bundle from Design Cuts. Again, this is just a small sample of some of the amazing elements that are in this bundle which you guys can get for only $29. So I strongly encourage you to check it out. There's so many, so many cool things in this one. It'll really help you guys step up your work and take it to the next level. I hope that you enjoyed this demo and this tutorial and hopefully learned some new cool tricks along the way. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Eric Vasquez and we'll see you next time.